Hello and welcome to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Steph and as you will have seen by the title, today is the first video in my Collection and Declutter series. This is... I have got way more stuff than I thought I had. So, I have all of my primers, foundations and concealers on my dressing table in front of me and there's a lot. There's a lot. So I'm going to cry a cry on him because I think it's going to be a long one anyway. So you might want to grab a drink and a snack. Put your feet up. So primers first. So the first primer I have here is the MUA Pro Base Primer Spray. Um, I don't reach for this at all. I don't remember it being bad or anything. I just, I don't reach for it. So straight away, that can go in the declutter pile. Next up is another one for the declutter pile. Um, not because it's bad, just because I don't reach for it. And this is the Sport FX Cool Down Primer and Recovery Gel. So, uh, yeah, I don't, again, don't remember it being bad or anything. I just don't reach for it. So that's in the declutter pile also. Um, next up, I have this Revolution Glow Dream Beam Face and Body Illuminating Primer. Um, I've only used this once and I wasn't sure so it it's really illuminating it's like covering your face in liquid highlighter so I'm gonna try this under a couple of different foundations and see how I get on um, but this one's on probation okay next up is one of my favorites to the point I have a backup of this um, which isn't going to be in the video because it looks the same as this one. So this is the Too Faced Hangover Replenishing Face Primer. I love this primer. Absolutely love it. It goes... All of my foundations sit nicely on top of it. I just really, really enjoy it. So yeah, this one is definitely not going anywhere. So next up I have the Fenty Beauty Soft Matte Pro Filter Primer. Um... I've only used this once so far. I used it under the Fenty Beauty, the soft matte foundation, and it was just too matte. I, I did not like the combination. So I just need to try this under some more glowy foundations and see how it holds up. Um, so yeah, I've only used it the once. So I am gonna keep playing with this just to see what it's like under other foundations. So next up we have the Becca Velvet Blurring Primer Perfecting Base. This, I don't get on with this at all. It just doesn't suit my skin. It's, it's like a layer of powder almost. So uh, that will be going in the declutter pile. So the next primer is the Barry M Pixie Skin Blurring Beauty Elixir, the one in the green bottle. Um, apparently this one is a dupe for the Fasali one. Um, I haven't tried that, um, way too expensive for me, but I like this primer more in summertime when it, the weather's warmer, um, just because it is a little bit more mattifying, um, but yeah, I really enjoy this, so, uh, that one's staying. And then we have the Elf Prep and Hydrate Balm, I'm actually wearing this today, I love this. So this is a stick primer, and it's like... It's got a little thing, little cap on to uh, stop it from drying out, I think. Um, but yeah, it's just a twist up. And again, I really, really enjoy this. It is especially good under matte foundations. So yeah, this is going nowhere. And next up is another absolute favourite. So I've got my high-end favourite, which is my Too Faced one. And this is my more affordable favourite. This is the Catrice Tensational 10-in-1 Dream Primer. This is an, a massive favourite. I love this primer. And again, it goes beautiful under all of the foundations. Um, it gives your skin a really kind of almost lit from within glow. I love this, absolutely love it. So if you're looking for an affordable primer that is hydrating, glowy, I can highly recommend this one. So next up is another primer that I've only used, I think twice. This is the Elf Mint Melt Cooling Face Primer. Um, 
I'm still making my mind up on this. Um, I've tried it under a couple of foundations and under one it didn't mix well at all. But under the other one it looked nice. So I'm just kind of playing around with this one just to see how best it works or if it's worth working with. So this one is on probation also along with the Revolution Glow one. And then I've got the Ordinary High Adherence Silicone Primer. I love this one. I've actually not far off finished this. So uh, <laughs> that's how much I like it. Yeah, I really, really enjoy this one. So the claims are that it's high adherence, blurring, surface smoother and primer. I would say pretty much it does what it says on the bottle. Yeah, I really enjoy this. So uh, that one's staying. And lastly, I've got two of these. This is the Elf Poreless Putty Primer, the original. And this one is the Elf Luminous Putty Primer. I really enjoy both of these. I find that they um, they kind of fill in the pores really well around kind of the nose area. I did have the matte one also, but I gave that to my daughter because it really did not suit my skin at all. Um, whereas a few months ago, um, I had really, really oily skin. I've always had really, really oily skin. And within the last few months, it's kind of drying out. So I don't know if that's an age thing or to do with my skincare routine now. I have no idea, but I am facing normal to dry skin for the first time in my life. And it's really thrown me, <laughs> really thrown me because all of the really glowy and hydrating things that I could never wear before are better now. They're kind of the ones that I aim for first. It's really bizarre, but yeah. So anyway, these two, I I highly recommend these. Um, if you have really, really oily skin, you'll probably like the matte one. Um, but yeah, I really, really didn't. Once was enough for me. Um, yeah, love these two. So that is it for primers. So, how many have we kept? So we kept one, two, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've kept ten, and we have three in the declutter pile. Not too bad. <laughs> so let's go with concealers next. So first up, this one has very fast become a firm favourite, and this is the Madage Beauty. It is their Skin Perfect Photo Ready concealer and I have it in the shade medium light porcelain I believe I haven't got my glasses on so I'm sure that's what it is this is amazing it's brilliant for just general spot coverage it is lovely under the eyes it's not drying it doesn't crease I really love this concealer really really love it so yeah a new firm favorite so next up, I have two different shades of this. This is the Revolution Conceal and Define Full Coverage Conceal and Contour Primer, Primer, Concealer. But yeah, I have the shades C7 and C6. I don't reach for these at all. Um, I used to, I used to really like these. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't reach for them at all now. So. I, so yeah, they are both going in the declutter pile. Next up is another favourite, and this is the Natasha Denona Transfix Matte Concealer um, in the shade 4N Neutral. Um, although it says Transfix Matte, I would say it does have like a matte look, but it's not drying. I really like this. Um, it's a bit too light for around the face, but it's perfect for under my eyes. So uh, that is going nowhere. So next up, I have the Catrice True Skin High Cover Concealer. I have three shades here. Um, the 018 Cool Rose and the 033 Cool Almond, both I can use now um, as my skin is like winter, spring time. And then I have the 020 Warm Beige, which is my summer shade. I love this concealer. This is so nice as a spot concealer on the face. 
it's not drying under the eyes it's nice and hydrating um exactly what it says it says 18 hour hydrating i haven't tested that theory because i don't wear my makeup for 18 hours but for the amount of time i wear my makeup i would say it's hydrating um so what's like the maximum say I'd say probably nine hours is the longest I wear. What the hell is that? Well, so I'd probably say that nine hours is the longest I've worn them. Yeah, I really, really like them. Ooh, waterproof. I've never actually noticed that it says waterproof. <laughs> How bizarre. Um, yeah, these are going nowhere because I love them. So next up, I have the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. I still really like these. Um, I have the shades medium sand and light sand. I wouldn't say that I would wear these under my eyes anymore because where my skin seems to be drying out, it's just, they're too kind of, they're not hydrating enough for under my eyes, but as spot concealers, they are fantastic. So the light sand is perfect for now and then the medium sand will be perfect for in the summer when I've got a bit of a tan but again going nowhere so next up I've got the Ordinary Concealer High Coverage Formula um, this is way too light for me I've used it under my eyes a few times but I found that it, it has really creased when I've worn it I've tried not setting it with powder I've tried setting it with powder um, so yeah this one's going to go in the declutter pile more than likely my daughter will have it. She has far paler skin than me and obviously young skin. So uh, I think that will head her way. So rude. So the next uh, concealer we've got here is the Colourpop Pretty Fresh. It is their Hyaluronic Creamy Concealer. I really love this. I really love this. It's great for spot concealing. It's great under the eyes. It's This is a nice little all-rounder. I really enjoy it. I've not had it for very long. But it's definitely one I reach for quite a lot. So that one is staying. Oh, I have two left. All right, so next up we have another Catrice one. This is the Liquid Camouflage High Coverage Concealer. Um, now that I've got the True Skin ones, I, I don't ever reach for this. It's a really good concealer, but I find that the True Skin concealers are better, for my skin at least. Um, yeah, it's not by any means a bad concealer it's really nice um but yeah i don't reach for it because of other concealers i have so this one is going in the declutter and lastly my final concealer is one of my absolute favorites it is the Too faced born this way multi-use sculpting concealer i have it in the shade almond this is a firm favorite firm favorite i reach for this a lot <laughs> pretty much every time I do my makeup at the moment this is what I reach for I love it I don't find it drying in any way I can use this to spot conceal I can use it under my eyes I love it I love it the only thing I don't love is the price but you get quite a lot in in the bottle and uh, I would say it is worth the money definitely worth the money I love it right so i have kept one two three four five six seven eight nine so i've kept nine concealers and we have four in the declutter pile so not bad at all i'm actually really proud of myself now on to foundations this one's going to be tough um right so let's start with one that I know is going to be going in the declutter and that is the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream Colour Correcting Full Coverage Natural Finish. I, I hated this. I didn't like how it sat on my skin. I hated it. I don't know, that sounds really horrible. I don't usually like to say that about a product but this just on my skin, horrible 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 so yeah that's that's going <laughs> if you have a different skin type to me you may love it but no <laughs> just no and i have the urban decay stay naked weightless liquid foundation in the shade 40 nn 
I love this. This is such a beautiful foundation. It just looks, it looks like skin. And when you're looking for a look that's like my skin but better, this does the job. It is beautiful. It lasts really well on the skin. It doesn't sink into any fine lines. Beautiful, beautiful foundation. I'm so happy that I tried this. Um, I'm definitely not going anywhere. So next up, I have another favourite foundation. This has been a favourite for a while now. Thanks to Nikki Raven for introducing me. And this is the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation. I have it in the shade 040 Warm Beige. Um, it's slightly too dark for me at the moment where I'm at my kind of pay list. Um, but I love it so much that I have a backup. <laughs> it's that good. So yes, 100% staying. It is a really, it says mattifying second skin effect. I wouldn't say it's overly mattifying. Um, it's not overly glowy either. Um, yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't say it is mattifying. It says it lasts up to 24 hours. Again, I have not tested that theory. I have no intention of leaving my makeup on for 24 hours. Um, I am not a young party animal anymore. I am... I'm an ageing colour fairy. We're going to go with that. <laughs> um, second skin effect, yes. This is beautiful. An absolute favourite. This is one that I recommend to everybody. If anyone asks me what the best affordable foundation is, I always say the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage because it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And not just for the price, just it's just fantastic. So yes, not going anywhere. So next up, I have the Benefit Hello Happy Soft Blur Foundation. This has survived the clutters. I've recently found out that apparently they are not cruelty free. Um, so that's just definitely going. Um, it's also quite old, so it's just gonna go in the bin. So the next foundation is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter High Coverage Cream Foundation. This is the older style, the one with the scent. I love the scent. It is, I will wear this just so that I smell like it. It is beautiful. I love it. I know a lot of people don't, but hey, we can't all be the same. Um, this one I love. I have it in Toasted Coconut, which is 240N. This is my summer shade. Um, absolutely not going anywhere. This is a favourite. It doesn't transfer. It doesn't sink into fine lines, anything like that beautiful it leaves a really it's very full coverage and I love it I love it so much so yeah that is going nowhere I also have the newer version the luminous matte um, I have this in creme brulee which is 150g this is my color now and I've only used this once so far it doesn't have the scent, which personally I'm extremely disappointed because I love the scent. Um, but yeah, I've only tried it once, so I can't really judge as yet what I really think of it. I still need to try it with different primers, etc. Yeah, I do wish it smelt the same as the older one. So I think uh, what I may have to do is just get the older one in creme brulee. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Um, but yeah, obviously it's still in the trial phases phases phase still in the trial phase anyways stop rambling stuff so next up i have the ordinary coverage foundation it's their high coverage foundation formula i used to wear this a lot it is a really really solid good foundation um i have it in 2.0 yg which is light medium yellow undertones I, I don't reach for it anymore. If I want to go for a more affordable foundation, I always head for the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage or one of the other ones I have coming up. Um, so unfortunately, this just gets forgotten about. So that is going to go in for declutter. So next up, we have the Revolution XX or XX Revolution. And this one... So it doesn't say on it, I believe this is the matte one. Um, but I have it in the shade FX7. This was very kindly sent to me from Nikki, Nikki Raven. We did kind of a, almost a foundation swapsie. Um, she very kindly sent me a few. 
Um, I love this. I've worn this a handful of times now. I really enjoy it. I think it's a beautiful foundation. Really beautiful foundation. So again, this one will not be going anywhere. I've not really worn it enough to get an idea of what skin types it would be any good for. Um, but it suits mine from what I've discovered so far. So yes, this is 100% staying. So next up is another foundation that I have in both my summer shade and my winter shade. And that is the KVD Locket foundation. I have the medium warm 52, which is my summer shade and the 47 light neutral, which is my shade now. Um, this is amazing. When they say full coverage, this literally covers everything. It gives the most flawless finish. It is super coverage, super. If you like a lighter foundation, you, you're not gonna like this. Let's just be honest. Um, but if you like a foundation that just covers all of your imperfections, gives you a nice, fresh, clean slate to uh, work on, this is beautiful. It doesn't transfer. It still looks the same at the end of the day on me. I love this foundation so much. Um, I've heard really mixed things about it actually, but I think a lot of that is down to what you like in a foundation. Um, see, sometimes I like a lighter foundation, like when my skin is better, <laughs> when my skin is uh, looking a little better on its own. Um, but I suffer with acne prone skin badly. And when it flares up, this is my holy grail. I do actually have another super coverage one coming up, which I recently discovered. Um, yeah, this one, firm favorite, love it. If you want full coverage, that's your girl. And another one where I have my winter and my summer shade in, this is the other super coverage foundation, which is amazing, it is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. I have it in 3 Cool, which is my shade now, and 5 Neutral, which is my summer shade. This foundation is... what can I say about this? Obviously there's a higher price tag on this, but it's amazing. It is another super coverage. Not quite as heavy as the KVD, but still with the same coverage. So I think if you... If you want the super coverage and not as thick a foundation, then you might like this. Um, I love it. I love it. So, well, yeah. So much so that I have my winter and summer shades. So, yeah, if you're looking for a really amazing, full coverage, high-end foundation, Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Air... I can't speak. The Charlotte Tilbury Air, Bl Air Blush. <laughs> Try again. The Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. That is such a difficult sentence to get out. I recommend it. I'm not going to try and say it again. <laughs> so next up is a foundation that I got when my skin was still really oily and I loved it. But now that my skin's dried out more, not so much. So this is the Body Shop Matte Clay Skin Clarifying Foundation in the shade Tamerza June 026. If you have oily skin, this is amazing. It dries down itself, you don't need to powder it down. It is beautiful, really beautiful. But obviously if you have dry patches, it really clings to them. When it says matte, it's it's matte. So for any of you with really, really oily skin, this is a very, very good foundation. Very, very good. So it's, sadly, it is with a heavy heart that I pop this in the declutter pile. So moving on to Madage Beauty London. This is their... Skin Perfect Photo Ready Foundation. I have it in the shade, I'm pretty sure it's medium light porcelain, same as the concealer. This is beautiful. It looks like skin. It has pretty decent coverage. 
it just looks like skin my skin but better um i love this i've worn this quite a few times now and i would happily recommend it happily it's really lightweight i think it would be perfect for most skin types i think if you're super oily maybe not so much um but anything from normal to oily through to dry i think this would be a beautiful foundation to wear i love it it is another another favorite i have quite a few favorites don't i but i must be lucky and just find the best ones i'm gonna stick with that that is my answer and that's my answer so the madash beauty skin perfect photo ready foundation is a winner in my books and 100 percent staying oh right where are we at now right <laughs> we're about halfway through i think <laughs> can't believe we've got so many right so next up we have the uoma say what soft matte hydrating foundation this is beautiful absolutely beautiful um the shade i had it in originally was um for olive skin um that one went to nikki raven um so now i have the shade white pearl t2w this is beautiful i love this it may be very ever so slightly too light but a bit of bronzer and it's perfect really i would definitely say this is weightless um it does leave a soft matte finish it's hydrating it does what it says on the bottle um i would highly recommend this foundation also so this foundation claims adjustable coverage for medium coverage use sparsely for full coverage use generously for extreme coverage apply multiple layers i have tried this in all three of those um ways and i've tried it sparsely for light coverage it looked beautiful i built it up to full coverage it looked beautiful i built it up further to cover all of my acne scarring and when it was bad it covered everything absolutely everything it's beautiful it's just so lightweight and i don't know it doesn't feel like you've got anything on your skin beautiful foundation not going anywhere right right next up um is a foundation that i'm still playing around with i'm not sure it's the Too faced born this way matte foundation i have it in the shade almond um i'm still trialing this out with different primers i'm not sure i can't really give an opinion on this as yet um so yeah that's staying but we'll see we'll see how it goes with the trying it out with different primers so for now it's staying so another foundation that i am happy to recommend is the catrice true skin hydrating foundation um i have it in the shade 020 warm beige which is slightly too um dark for me at the moment ever so slightly i can i can get away with it um this foundation is beautiful so beautiful it's really lightweight really hydrating it looks beautiful on the skin it your skin looks like skin highly recommend this um as far as affordable foundations go catrice really nails it really nails it because if i were to try this not knowing it was an affordable brand i would say this is high end yeah highly recommend it if you are in the UK, um, you can get Catrice products on Just My Look. So for any order within the UK, it is free postage. And yeah, you've got your Catrice on there, Essence, plus others. But I highly recommend both the True Skin and the HD Liquid Coverage Foundations from Catrice. If you are looking for an affordable, amazing foundation, either one of those, fantastic so next up is another foundation that i'm still playing around a bit with and that is the fenty beauty pro filter soft matte foundation i tried it with the fenty primer no absolutely no 
I looked crispy. But on top of hydrating primers, so far it looks beautiful, but I do need to use a very hydrating primer um, to get this to look nice. So I would imagine if you've got really, really oily skin, this is going to be your best friend because it is really matte, really matte. But yeah, obviously if you have kind of normal to dry, I think it's it's perfect with a hydrating primer. If you have extremely dry, just don't bother. It's a nice way of putting it. Um, but yeah, if you have anything from super oily to normal to dry, slightly dry, then yeah, I can recommend it. But definitely put a hydrating primer under it if you don't have super oily skin. We're getting there. Right, so next is the MUA Pro Base Longwear Matte Finish Foundation. This is a beautiful foundation. It looks, it, it's just beautiful foundation. I have it in the shade 130. I just don't ever reach for it. I think I forget it because it's kind of in the back of the drawer. I think I'm going to keep this around for another round of decluttering. Just see if I reach for it before my next declutter. If I haven't, then it will go then. But yeah, I think I think I should definitely give it give it a chance now that I've brought it to the forefront of my mind. Maybe I'll remember it's there and give it a go. So for now, this one is staying. I just need to remember it. So next up is another amazing foundation that I have in both my summer and winter shades. And that is the Zoeva Authentic Skin. It's a natural luminous foundation. This is beautiful. This one is a lightweight, skin looking, hydrating beauty of a foundation. It really looks like skin. I would say it's more of a, a medium coverage. Um, I haven't tried building it up too much. So this is a foundation that I pick up when my skin is having a nicer day, not too bad. I really enjoy this. It doesn't dry out my skin. It doesn't cling to dry patches. It doesn't sink into fine lines. Um, it's hydrating. My skin still looks beautiful after hours of wear. Another one I recommend. I know it's another high-end one, but I have recommended a couple of uh, a couple of affordable ones too. Yeah, I think a lot of the time with the more expensive foundations, um, from what I've found so far, anyway, just the ones I've tried, you really can tell that these are expensive foundations. However. The Catrice foundations, if I didn't know they were an affordable brand, I would have put them up with these. So, uh, so yeah, but obviously being high end, you would expect it to be amazing because it's a high price tag. But yeah, one of these came to me from Nikki. So I have my winter shade already and then I was very kindly gifted the summer shade for me from Nikki Raven. Um, this was amongst the uh, foundations that she sent my way. Um, I love it. Right, we are down to the final four. This has felt never ending. Right, let's crack on and get through these last four. So the next foundation is another one that came to me from Nikki Raven and I am so so thankful because it is beautiful. It is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation in the shade 220N. This is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I don't really know what else to say. It, it looks perfect when you first put it on, hours later, it doesn't sink into any of my fine lines, it doesn't cling to any dry patches, it's hydrating, your skin looks really glowy but in a natural way. It's beautiful. I do need to powder it down a bit but not much. This is beautiful. And again another one I highly recommend if you like 
a lightweight, glowy, beautiful, skin-like finish. It's another amazing foundation. So, moving on to the foundation that I actually have on my face today, and that is the Nabla Close-Up Futuristic Foundation. This is only the second time I've worn it. I fell in love with it instantly. It says weightless, soft focus, perfect complexion. It covers pretty much everything. Um, what it doesn't, the concealer does. This is beautiful. So I know Nabla have just brought out a new foundation. It's more of a tinted balm. Um, I, I don't tend to go for those because uh, I generally have quite a lot of acne, acne scarring that needs covering. So I need a foundation, not a tinted skin balm. Um, this one, <laughs> I'm going off track here. The Close Up Futuristic Foundation, amazing. So you can see how skin-like it looks because I've been wearing this for four or five hours now and it just, it still looks beautiful. So yeah, I'd say this is more mid-range price, but I really love it. So yeah, if you're looking for an indie brand foundation that is amazing, then Nabla could be your girl. But yeah, I love it. So next up is another firm favourite. How is it I have so many favourite foundations? I have no idea. It never used to be that way when my skin was super oily. I used to really struggle to get foundations that suited my skin. But now, it it's almost like my skin saying, hey, we'll be your friend. I haven't got a clue what I'm talking about. So, the Too Faced Born This Way Undetectable Medium to Full Coverage Foundation. This is one of my absolute favourite foundations. I've been wearing this for quite a while now. I love it. For a long time, I had the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage and this foundation, and they were my two ride or dies. Absolutely beautiful. And I have it in the shade Almond. When used alongside the Too Faced Concealer, the Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer, um, when used alongside that, it is the perfect combination absolutely perfect so uh so yeah this is another foundation that i highly recommend are you getting bored of this now i'm getting bored of saying it but it is another foundation that i highly recommend and finally we are on to the last foundation and this one i have picked out of my box of shame because i haven't tried it yet um, this is the Revolution Conceal and Glow Illuminating Foundation in the shade F6. It is still in its packet, so obviously it is going nowhere because I haven't tried it yet. So, let's have a see. So I've kept hold of 22 foundations. Bear in mind that some of them are the summer shade to my winter shade, but yes, 22. And... Uh, I have parted ways with four. Not necessarily the best declutter, but that's the best I'm going to do. Because I don't do the declutters to uh, to do a ruthless one. If you're after ruthless declutters, my channel is not the channel to go to. I don't tend to do a ruthless declutter. I'm happy to declutter products that I don't reach for, that don't suit my skin. Um, but if I like it, then it stays. That's, and quite a lot of the time, I only get a product because I like it, if that makes sense. So yeah, if you're looking for ruthless declutters, yeah, mine aren't for you. But if you like to see collection videos, that's more, more or less what my videos are, with a few items decluttered, just to uh, make space, because... Uh, yeah, my ever-growing collection just is getting too large for the, the space that I have for it. So yes, I have decluttered what is necessary to and kept around everything else. 
So finally, that is the end of my primer, foundation and concealer collection and declutter. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a like, thumbs up. It really helps me out. Um, I will have the rest of my collection and declutter videos coming soon and I will add them all into the collection to clutter playlist so yeah if you're new around here then hi I'm Steph I am a huge makeup addict I love colorful makeup indie brands so if you like the sound of all that then my channel is the place to be so yes do please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next time I upload or the rest of my collection and declutter series. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all having a great day, a great evening, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. I hope you're taking care of yourselves. I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.